make movies long enough and you start to want to move the camera. It starts off with slow creeps and slow dolly shots. And before you know it, you're trying to do crazy steady cam and gimbal oneers that tie together dozens of different perspectives, focus pulls, exposure pulls, and very quickly you get into deep water. You can hire a professional steady cam operator for $1,000 a day and up. But that's not always possible, either because of where you live, what your budget is, or the constraints of your shot. So most people end up trying to do it with a gimbal. There are some great gimbals out there. Gimbals have come a long way. And you can even use the camera you already have if it's small enough to get onto a gimbal. When you actually start rigging your camera to a gimbal, plus adding all the things that you need it to work properly, you realize it can be quite a complicated process, one where a lot of things can go wrong. This is because you're relying on the camera system, syncing with the gimbal system, syncing with the focus system, syncing with the remote video system. And if you have a problem with any of the systems or any of the connections between the systems, you're gonna have an issue. And there is nothing worse than waiting around on set while you try and fix some technical glitch as the sun is going down, as you're losing your location, any number of time constraints that happen on set. Wouldn't it be amazing if there was just one system completely built out, totally integrated, made by the one company that works right out of the box? Well, luckily there is. This is the Ronin 4D, AKA chicken camera. It is a camera, a gimbal, remote video, LiDAR, focus system, all in one, with a nice big screen, with great ProRes codecs, with an adaptable mount, which can accept a huge variety of mirrorless lenses comes set up and synchronized. Even if you have no experience with gimbals, you can get smooth footage with this camera right out of the box. And in addition to the three axes that a gimbal stabilizes, the Ronin 40 stabilizes the fourth axis, the up and down movement of the camera from walking with this science fiction type floating head. Now the Ronin 40 makes smooth, steady cam like shots, very simple to do, but it doesn't necessarily make them easy. How do you integrate this camera into your existing workflow? Because unless you plan to shoot the entire film on a gimbal, you'll be going from your A and B cameras to the Ronin 4D as a specialized camera for moving shots or any other time that this is gonna come in handy. The Ronin 4D shoots in D-Log, which is a very high quality log format that should cut and grade very well with any other camera system you're using, be it Blackmagic, Sony, Sigma, or Canon. And it can record in ProRes, both HQ and LT, and other proprietary formats. It has a 6K sensor, but you can shoot at 4K or even 2K without having to crop in on the sensor still get the entire field of view, but make smaller files. Not only does it have pretty impressive autofocus, but it also has LiDAR, which gives you this amazing kind of bat vision of the scene in front of you. And you can either use the inbuilt autofocus or override it slightly to get the focus exactly where you want on the subject in front of your camera. It works really well with autofocus lenses. And you can actually add a focus motor as well for city lenses. I use the Sigma uh, E-mount contemporary range and the images coming off this camera were as good as anything I've ever shot with a gimbal or Steadicam. Despite me not being a particularly good operator, what would you use this camera system for besides the chase sequences or walk and talk? I've actually really been discovering a lot more in this realm. I think it's perfect for a type of shot called the moving master. That is where you connect various shots in your shot list in one single take. It's not necessarily a one-er where you shoot the entire shot in one take and you don't have any freedom to cut. Establishing shot, your two shot, your single, your over the shoulder, maybe some of your details. And it combines several of them into one shot so you may start in a wide existing shot and follow one character in into a two shot, then they may move or you may move the camera and it becomes a single. And again, this doesn't have to be a one. You can also shoot a second moving master that picks up the shots that you didn't get, the reverses of the other side of the two shot and the matching single shot from your previous shot. You can now cut these together to 
get rid of lines you don't like, or speed up your edit, or even go to a cutaway to solve any problems in post-production. Shooting in this way gives you less control over the lighting, but it gets you out of that very workmanlike slog of going through the whole scene from the establishing, go through the whole scene from a two shot, going through the whole scene from matching singles, going through the whole scene again from over the shoulders. So instead of shooting the scene eight times, you're shooting the scene twice or three times. This means the actors can keep up their energy and it tends to be a more engaging, more engrossing way to get the coverage you need to tell your story because your audience is in there moving around the scene with your characters. They feel like they're part of the action. Here's the scene we shot with the Ronin 4D. I borrowed this blocking from the Robert Zemeckis film, What Lies Beneath. We start on an establishing shot of a car crash or a police car. We pull back to see the wife's reaction. Then we pull back further to get a two shot of the wife and the person in bed, then walks away, leaving us with a single of the person in bed. And then we pull back further to get a single of the wife with her back turned on the phone. Finally, she walks out, revealing the entire scene. You can let this scene play out as a one or you can go in and get cutaways so that you can have the flexibility to change the timing and even change lines in the edit. This scene could have been a two or three page scene and we were able to light it, block it and shoot it in an hour. If we had done single camera setups for the establishing, the one shot, the two shot, the single and so on, it probably would have taken us three or four hours and the result would not have been nearly as dynamic. The quality of the final product is very much dependent on the Zenmuse DJI sensor, which is excellent, and the very fast and super responsive nature of the Sigma contemporary glass, which despite their quality are tiny lenses and don't add much at all to the overall weight of the setup. A couple of tips in using the Ronin 4D that I learned as I put together this video. The first is it can be very difficult to get the lenses on because of the very fine tolerances. The best way I found is to balance the Ronin on its battery and drop them in vertically so that the weight of the lens doesn't fight against it fitting into the mount. I also learned to take twice as long in resting as I am shooting because while it is a small camera, it certainly takes some getting used to to operate because you're using it in a different way. If you have the option, uh, definitely look at some kind of camera mount device. Once you've finished a take, don't rush into the next take. Give yourself a couple of minutes to rest. Maybe just watch back the clip you just shot so that you're not going straight into another take and getting burnt out too quickly. If you pace yourself, you'll get a much longer shoot day shoot a little wider than you actually plan to use, shoot in 6K, and then you can always reframe or punch in in post to fix any small imperfections to your operating. Definitely use the joystick to tilt the camera down rather than trying to raise the entire unit, which puts it in an awkward position and makes it harder to use. Just because you're operating the camera doesn't mean that you have to stand up. There's nothing wrong with moving from seated position to seated position for long takes and bouncing your arms on your knees to get a little break while still getting good footage, especially for seated scenes. With the control dial, uh, pulling focus or pulling exposure is really easy, but you should know that when you hit record, it exits you out of whatever mode that you're in. So you need to hit record and then get into say exposure mode if you wanna do an exposure pull as your first move, which is what we did here. At just under $7,000, the Ronin 4D costs around as much as a regular entry-level cinema camera, like the Canon C70 or the Sony FX6, despite having all the added bonuses of stabilization. It's not something that everyone is gonna just have around in case they need it, but these units rent for $150 to $250 a day in most major film areas. And if you consider the time it takes to rig and de-rig a cinema camera to a gimbal and get it working, which is at least half an hour, it totally makes sense if you're planning to do these type of moves to rent one for the day, given how simple it is to operate compared to the alternatives like Steadicam or a traditional gimbal. It makes even more sense if you're shooting on compatible glass and can use the same lenses as you use on your A and B cameras. 
That is my look at the Ronin 4D. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.